Well, by Natalia, who will tell us about the thermal combustion, technical aspects, tests, results, and problems. And maybe you can also just spend 20 seconds on saying who you are. Yeah, okay. So, my name is Natalia Bokoska. Okay. My, my name is Natalia Bokoska. So, I defended my PhD in 2005 in the University of Oul, Finland. So, my first project, PhD project, was about water masers. So, then I was a visitor at Narzita. In 2006, uh, so I uh, the problem of the uh, uh, spreading layer on the neutral star surface, and so we, uh, the results uh, are published. So the paper was uh, uh, in this year, so uh, in February. And uh, in 2008, uh, I got uh, money from the uh, Finnish, Aca Finnish Academy. For three years, and so we started the new project, uh, Double Combustion, in February with uh, Nils and Taxi. Um, so, I can say that in principle, it's a bit early to present uh, the results uh, on the meeting because actually we don't have any correct results now, results now. But uh, so, when my task will be to describe the current situation, and it's it could be useful, first of all, for people who will use, who will participate, who will use something in this business, and for others, it's just a description of the current stage. Um, so I'll start from the uh, uh, full system of equations, uh, just to, to have a full picture. So first and second uh, equations look as usual, so the uh, mass conservation equation, the momentum <coughs> conservation equation, uh, but of course you should uh, keep in mind that, uh, so we are talking about mixture, and uh, now, so rho is already density of a, of a mixture, and uh, uh, pressure is also some uh, uh, pressure of the mixture, and we are talking about uh, uh, species, uh, mass fraction of a species, so we have uh, species equations, and so here is the <coughs> equation for k species, and of course uh, uh, the number of such equations is equal to the number of the species in the mixture. So uh, y is the mass fraction, by definition is the ratio of the uh, species density to the uh, mixture density. Uh, so Nils told already about this equation, so here are two terms. First term is the diffusion term, and in this term there, is, there are diffusion binary coefficients, and this is the reaction term, which describes all uh, reaction participates, uh, how our reaction participates in, in this uh, physics. <laughs> And uh, the last is the energy equation. Uh, so what's interesting here is that, uh, so maybe this term. So you see here is the uh, time de derivative of uh, the uh, mass fraction, uh, y capital Y. And uh, instead of this uh, uh, derivative, we put here right-hand side of the species equation. And so this term actually, uh, shows how the reactions participate in the energy equation. And here is the term. Mm. So it's winter, so normally it's just like it's smaller, right? No. Okay, so, so principle, so right hand side divided by two. So you want to uh, decrease the, the resolution? Yeah. Yeah, I did that. The resolution is smaller? Yes, it's a significant But okay, maybe it's not so principal point. So here is the right hand side divided by T. So in the right hand side terms, so there are some external uh, heating and cooling uh, terms, and also here is the uh, heat conduction term. Uh, again, so we are talking about mixture, uh, equation of states looks as usual, but so you should remember that now. Uh, molecular weight of the mixture is not constant, it's a principal point. By definition, this one divided by mu is the sum of uh, such ratios. 
so I'll take it over divided by the corresponding molecular weight. Uh, and so now already we can look, uh, consider this as a, as a variable, it's a pencil, I mean, this is a pencil in, in the code. And so about entropy. To be. To be. Okay. Uh, about entropy, so by definition, uh, Entropy for a mixture is the sum of uh, uh, y multiplied by uh, species uh, entropy. And so by definition, species entropy is the integral of, uh, of Cp over dt and plus integral constant. And so instead of integral, we put here the uh, <coughs> Taylor's function of entropy. So here is the uh, expansion coefficients, and so these coefficients we take from the uh, uh, Kenkin database. Uh, now about the data files. Uh, so first, uh, no, it's you want to make yes. Go to background. Yes. Right. Hand. Right and click. Right hand? Yeah, if you go to the back room, just take left, right and click. Right and click. Right. This one. And then property. Mm -hmm. And set settings. Yes, change this as well. Yes, exactly. Good. Yes, that's good. Uh, so the main file is game in file. Uh, so the first rule is uh, it's clear, it's elements, so what elements you use, then species. So here is all species you use in the uh, mixture. Uh, so the number of species should be exactly the same, uh, which is in the, on the top of the chemistry module. And then uh, thermo, uh, numbers. So what does it mean? So this is a list of species. Then you see uh, three uh, temperatures. It means two temperature ranges. So here is, for example, for hydrogen, so temperature ranges from uh, 300 to 1000, from 1000 to 5000. And then uh, 14 numbers. So first seven numbers are uh, the eight coefficients for the upper temperature range from 1,000 to 5,000. And the second uh, seven uh, numbers are eight coefficients for, uh, for the lower temperature ranges. Uh, and so these coefficients are for the enthalpy and for CP uh, expansion. Uh, and at the end of the chemin file, uh, the description of reactions. So the reaction and then one to three uh, coefficients. This is uh, Achilles coefficients determine, uh, determining the uh, reaction rate for the uh, corresponding reaction. Uh, so actually that's all for, for this file. And uh, the next file is drum that file. So here is uh, coefficients for calculation, binary diffusion, and viscosity. Uh, here is uh, uh, cross sections uh, and uh, uh, some coefficients for calculation the collisional integral. So in principle, you don't need to think about it. Not just use this file. Just uh, put this file into the run directory. And so this file, add that file. In principle, so the name of this file, uh, so is just for, for the historical reasons. Now we're working with air initial conditions, and uh, so we name it air. But in principle, it means just a file with the initial conditions for the temperature, pressure, and uh, mass fraction of the species. So, for example, here. Uh, 
So the initial composition, composition is uh, with uh, N2, O2, and H2. And so if species uh, are commented, so they don't participate in the initial mixture. And so you, instead of commenting them, you can just set it by zero. So it means that y is zero. And of course, it's in, in the percentages. Isn't the CO2 concentration higher by now? This is example. It's commented now. This is just so I, I didn't think a lot about the, the meaning of, of this mixture. No, the it's not generally this either, of course. So that was 2000. So you, you are talking about the temperature, initial temperature. Mm -hmm. that's, that's okay. So this is quite good temperature, 1,200. This initial temperature. So I will, I will show you the results. So you will see how it looks like. Uh, about modules. Now, actually, there are two uh, modules, chemistry modules. First module, module is EOS chemistry module. Uh, so in principle, this module is just for using uh, all uh, necessary variables as uh, CP, CV, gamma uh, as passes and nothing more. And so for this moment, uh, all, uh, all uh, necessary uh, routines are in the uh, chemistry module. So we discussed it uh, before that maybe it's not so good, so some parts should be uh, in the EOS chemistry module. But so for this moment, so all stuff in, in the US. Equation, I'm saying. Yes, EOS uh, chemistry module. But now it's, it's here. Uh, and uh, so what, what I can say, so here four main routines uh, calculate who can mixture. So in this routine, uh, all uh, uh, variables for the mixture are calculated. Then uh, routine D chemistry DT. Uh, so here is a species equation described. Uh, then this is routine uh, for the calculation of the uh, heat conduction term in the energy equation. And so this routine is working with the edit file, so you just uh, initialize the so working with the initial conditions. Initialize the initial conditions. Uh, so we are uh, we talked already about that, but I repeat, so we're working now with two mechanisms. So the idea is to calculate the full leak mechanism, but it's quite complicated. And so here is uh, 13 species. And so to, to simplify the situation, we use the reduced mechanism with six reactions and uh, eight species. And in principle, the result should be the same. but. We cannot get the same results for this moment. Uh, and in principle, it's not clear, so what's the problem? So the problem is clear, but so how to resolve this problem is not so clear. And actually, this is the uh, current result. So this is the uh, ignition delay test. Uh, so this is reduced mechanism, this is the mechanism. So the, uh, we are working with zero D uh, problem. Uh, the most uh, simplified. Uh, so the ignition delay, so this is the time, and then we come to the stationary regime. So all reactants are built, and so we, we come to the stationary uh, regime with the constant temperature. And so you see here, uh, the initial temperatures uh, 900, 1000, 1000, 1000, 1000, 1000, and this is the time, time uh, the initial delay for this one. And I can say that uh, so this is the correct result, so comparing with the previous papers. But the problem is that the resu result temperature is very, very low. So we start from, for example, 900 and come to the temperature which is lower than 1,100. So in the full mechanism, V mechanism. So we start from 1,200 and comes to 
well, 3,000 or even more. So this is quite good temperature at least. So, uh, and uh, the time delay is also quite good. It's the same as here. But, uh, so the problem is here, uh, so if you compare two curves, so black curve and red curve, so the difference is just in the time step. The time step is very, very, uh, so for, for the red curve, the time step is a bit larger than for the black curve. But you see here already the result is, is absolutely wrong. So what does it mean? It means, but for this case, uh, the time step works quite good. So uh, different time steps uh, give the same results. And so even I, I try to, to do the automatic time step. And so the result is the same. Here, what we you know, it's not clear at all. So, so how does this time step compare to the highest reaction rate? I mean, so the, this is the, the time steps here is 10 to minus 10. So I think so that that's okay for for the highest. Uh, so that's the question probably to me. So what's the uh, time step for the fast? This is the slightly longer one. The red curve. Red curve a bit longer, a bit. I factor two or something. Or? Yes, mm -hmm. factor two. And already, so it means so that this vigor we got per mm -hmm. so it's exactly the result of a uh, uh, wrong time step. Mm -hmm. So nothing more. So this was here, you see the wiggle at daytime. Huh? The wiggle at daytime. Yes, 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 yes. So that, that's the result. But uh, the main problem is that we don't have, uh, uh, the, the energy is not conserved. And uh, the problem is that, so it is conserved uh, for the uh, simplified mechanism, I mean for, for a one step mechanism. And doesn't conserve for the uh, full mechanism, more complicated mechanism. In, in both cases, even for the black curve? Yeah, yes. And if you reduce the time step further by a factor of two? So it's okay here and here. But then uh, the temperature grows crucially. This. So what's going on with penetration? Also. And uh, so I tried 10 to minus 11, and nothing, nothing helps. But uh, so it, it, it's quite, quite long. So it takes several days to calculate all this. Okay. So, but but something it's not clear what's going on. So in principle, that's all what I wanted to say for this moment. Yeah, maybe. You have any bright ideas for our problem with the energy conservation? Mm -hmm. uh, what is the, what is the algorithm that is used for integrating the uh, the system? Because the time step has to be fixed by hand, or is it uh, adapted? It's adapted to the time step. Here is. Uh, uh, for automatic time step or for the mixed time step, so the result is the same. Okay. So that, that's okay. Here is uh, automatic time step doesn't work. Okay. Uh, fixed time step gives uh, so smaller time step is quite good result. A bit larger several factors so gives. I mean what uh, Rafael is basically uh, referring to is if you look at. Um, and for example, in Merkle recipes, uh, look for example how you solve ODEs. Uh, you always do this by solving uh, the same ODE twice. And that is working only at an overhead of only 30%, because you can re reuse certain things which have been calculated. And so one calculation has a longer time step, the other one has a shorter time step. And then you compare with the two and take the one which is better. And so that's the mechanism that we have not implemented. It is Tony, Tony implemented this time step RKF method, which implements automatic time step. But that is not me. No, me, that's not you. But, so that's you. Yeah. But well, I don't know that has been tested well. It hasn't been used much, that's you. But 
it's, it's often relatively straightforward and simple. So, well, that's certainly an option to try. Hmm? And that does it. Yeah. Yes. What is the algorithm? It is the question because our algorithm that was specifically dedicated to state equations and have very large uh, time scales in the equations. And although this uh, algorithm that was implemented, so we have a our problems, or is it the problem that there are not these algorithms for state equations that are implemented? So uh, we, 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 have, we, don't have, we don't have any algorithms for state okay. equations. But no, to okay. an extent, what I'm going to talk about on Friday goes in that direction, but it, I don't think it can be directly applied. But there's no PS algorithm or emphasis stuff or anything like that. It's just explicit. Did you just remember just our usual 2 n and the Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But what is what you said about turning the increment? If you look at the source directory, there's a, there's a few time steps, something yes. modules. Yes. And one of them is, is <coughs> well, actually, it's, it's, it's called yeah. Nukutala Failbird, but it's it's yeah. the cash card scheme, which you also find in the American recipes. Yeah. And that does a fourth order and a fifth order time set. It uses more memory. It's not a two end scheme in any respect. It's okay. significantly more memory. Yeah. It does a fourth order and a fifth order time step at, at the same time, we're using the same data, and then it, it determines the time step from the differences and exactly in the way you described it. Okay, so it's just adapted. Yes, but yes. actually, yeah, but, but what you said actually was to do, to, to do two different time steps, right? Yeah, yeah, but that's exactly what it is. It's, no, it's, it goes two different orders. No, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a more efficient variant of the same idea. But yeah, that's right. Same yeah. idea. You use two different schemes yes. that, that uh, would give that had different order and that, that would give um, different errors and, and then you combine the two and then you do it in a clever way mm -hmm. uh, so you don't have to really do two do, do separate schemes but you can use these um, stacked schemes. Yeah, and that's what I'm used to as well but I was not aware it was actually the same as the case. It, it's the same idea but with a different, a different way of doing it. It could actually be exactly what is what I read in the numeric recipes. But I just said about these two different orders. Practically no 3D PD integrator uses adaptive time scheme. Yeah, except that maybe that's kind of work at the moment. We have to do it maybe, yeah. That's the point. We always do that at uh, our company when we do soft particles. <coughs> we have the same thing, it's mm -hmm. quite a small and long concept. So then really yeah. it's adaptive. Important to understand to uh, Vladimir, of course. But what do you mean? Uh, but your memory requirements will increase by a factor of four. Uh, or uh, 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 when, but it's when you actually take yeah. down the issues between the as well. Uh, in the density of the A. So then you want to resolve when that will to each other? Exactly, yeah. yeah. And in those cases, the time step can vary a whole lot. Yeah. Then you use this adaptive. So, I mean, as far as um, stability of the code is concerned, you can basically run almost until this jump or something, or most of the time, you can actually run with a time step of 10 to minus 7, a thousand times stronger time step, I think. Is that right? It wouldn't, and only then it would go unstable. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you can already run a thousand times longer time step, and most of the time it's okay, it's just that that all of a sudden, uh, for at one particular moment, uh, we have to go below 10 to minus 14 or something, I don't know. Something crazy at least. And uh, it's not still not clear, but that's really the solution, but that's a possibility, of course. It's, it's certainly worth trying the set of terms. Yeah, we can't, especially if it's actually implemented, I didn't realize that. Yes, that's perfect. No, well, I just think it was actually happening so fast in this problem. It's the fastest uh, Venus time to understand. Is that what it was written? No, not clear. I mean, when you look at the time uh, traces of, of any of the 20 variables, none of them suggest that anything dangerous is happening at any time. So it's, I'm, I'm, it's shocking to me. But are you, are you saying that things happen at, at time scales that are significantly shorter than the one determined by the fastest reaction rate? I think it's just that yeah, you can resolve this fast structure, it's pretty yeah. good. That's, if you do that, that should be yeah. all enough. 
Now, coming back to, to schemes for state equations, I mean, there, there are all sorts of implicit schemes which are difficult to code and, and then are particularly annoying when you have nonlinear uh, equations. But I'm, on Friday, I'm going to talk about uh, some sort of compromise where you use an explicit scheme that um, captures some properties of implicit schemes. And I know there's a paper that I all, all, always did not pay much attention to, but I have it. But I, I'm, I'm going to talk about diffusive problems. You have a high diffusivity, and so you have a small time step, and if you increase the solution, you have a terribly small time step because uh, for diffusive problems, the, the, the grid sizing enters uh, with power of 2 in, in the time step. And then you can sort of stretch this by a factor of 10 or 20 of these. But there is another paper where they combine this, where they do this for diffusion reaction equations. So they also do the reaction part. And um, I, I guess I should just send you the, the PDF and you can have a look at that. Maybe then that uh, also helps. It, it's, it's, it doesn't, it isn't as, you can't use time steps as large as with an implicit scheme. But then if you are orders of magnitude above the fastest reaction rate, you have to be careful anyway whether what you're getting out, even if the scheme is stable, is still um, what, what the, the equations say. So I guess it's worth looking at that. Mm -hmm. So that should be done, and maybe in the afternoon we should look at it a bit. Okay.